This is a Daily Purpose Bible Study and Devotional, a podcast by Our Given Purpose, your go-to destination for a transformative journey through God's Word. I'm Tori Slaughter, your host and Bible study teacher, joined by amazing men and women of God who share their testimonies through powerful devotionals that align with the daily assigned reading. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel via the platform you're currently listening and let a friend know they too can get ready for a life-changing experience. Turn with me in the scriptures to Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9 verses 25 through 31 and verses 36 through 38. Nehemiah chapter 9 beginning at verse 25. They captured fortified cities and fertile land. They took possession of houses filled with all kinds of good things, wells already dug, vineyards, olive groves, and fruit trees in abundance. They ate to the full and were well nourished. They reveled in your great goodness. But they were disobedient and rebelled against you. They turned their backs on your law. They killed your prophets who had warned them in order to turn them back to you. They committed awful blasphemies. So you delivered them into the hands of their enemies who oppressed them. But when they were oppressed, they cried out to you. From heaven you heard them, and in your great compassion you gave them deliverers who rescued them from the hand of their enemies. But... As soon as they were at rest, they again did what was evil in your sight. Then you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies so that they ruled over them. And when they cried out to you again, you heard from heaven. And in your compassion, you delivered them time after time. You warned them in order to turn them back to your law. But they became arrogant and disobeyed your commands. They sinned against your ordinances, of which you said, the person who obeys them will live by them. Stubbornly, they turned their backs on you, became stiff-necked, and refused to listen. For many years, you were patient with them. By your spirit, you warned them through your prophets. Yet, they paid no attention, so you gave them into the hands of the neighboring peoples. But in your great mercy, you did not put an end to them or abandon them, for you are a gracious and merciful God. Verse 36. But see, we are slaves today, slaves in the land you gave our ancestors so they could eat its fruit and the other good things it produces. Because of our sins, its abundant harvest goes to the kings you have placed over us. They rule over our bodies and our cattle as they please. We are in great distress. In view of all of this, we are making a binding agreement, putting it in writing, and our leaders, our Levites, and our priests are affixing their seals to it. Lord, we bless you and we thank you for the reading of this word. Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 25 through 31 and verses 36 through 38. Oh, my Lord, my God, have mercy on us. People of purpose, brothers and sisters, today's Bible study and devotional focuses on the lessons we can learn specifically from verses 36 through 38, and it is titled Renewal and Covenant. Amen? These concluding verses of chapter 9 of Nehemiah provides a glimpse into the heartfelt commitment made by the people of Israel to renew their covenant with God. This covenant renewal follows a detailed account of God's faithfulness throughout their history, spanning Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 22 through through chapter 10, verse 39. This is part of our assigned reading. And in this narrative, we find a systematic way their agreement holds lessons for us today, guiding us from idol worship to wholehearted devotion to God and assuring us of God's rescue when we remain faithful. 
to summarize this passage in our assigned reading of Nehemiah chapter 9 through chapter 10, we are labeling this a journey of renewal. I want you, I'm going to pause just for a moment, I want you to grab pen, paper, or some other way to write down a note that when you read through this in your time, that you will note the spaces and the places where you know that God is going to renew you. The things that you need to take off from the past, how he has delivered you, and what has brought you to this place right now, even as you're listening to this podcast. Nehemiah chapter 9 recounts God's gracious interventions in the history of Israel from the Exodus to their present day. Despite Israel's rebelliousness, God displayed steadfast love, leading them out of Egypt, providing sustenance, guidance, and protection. In Nehemiah chapter 10, the people respond to this history of grace by making a comprehensive and systematic covenant agreement. They pledge to walk in God's ways, separating themselves from idolatry, intermarriage, and practices that had led them astray. This covenant is marked by a thorough commitment to every aspect of life, family, worship, finances, and relationships. Nehemiah chapter 10 has so many valuable lessons for us today. I would like to share with you three that I have gleaned and will also give you some prayer points. So please make sure you stay to the end. So number one, this comprehensive commitment. In Nehemiah chapter 10, the people's agreement encompassed every area of life. We are reminded not to compartmentalize our faith, but to bring every aspect of our existence under God's lordship. So everything from our families to our work, our finances, the choices we make, we can have a holistic commitment that is beneficial and essential for us to turn from the idols of our age and align with God's design. Number two is the separation from the world. The Israelites committed to avoiding the influences of surrounding nations, particularly in terms of idol worship. So for us, as believers, we are called to disentangle ourselves from worldly influences that will lead to idolatry. So whether it's materialism, cultural norms, or self-centered pursuits, our separation ensures that our hearts will be undivided in devotion to God. We will have circumcised hearts. And number three, obedience to God's commands. The covenant highlights obedience to God, which involves understanding his word and putting it into practice. By aligning their lives with God's instructions, the Israelites sought a transformation from within, a process that remains very relevant for us today as believers. Obedience is a powerful means of overcoming idolatry and deepening our relationship with God. We have an assurance for us being faithful. And in Nehemiah 9, verses 36 and 37, it carries this plea of the people for God's deliverance and their commitment to be his obedient people. Now, this plea echoes throughout the Bible, okay? It is a call for us as believers to turn back to God and away from idols, God's promise to rescue his people if they remain faithful, if we remain faithful in his covenant, extends to us right now. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, then I will heal their land, right? So just as God's faithfulness continued throughout Israel's history, his faithfulness endures through the ages. If we brothers and sisters, remain steadfast in obedience, seeking him wholeheartedly. God promises to guide, protect, and rescue us from the snares of idolatry and sin. God's promise of rescue 
remains. His word remains. This is a reminder for us that his faithfulness endures when we remain in him. Amen. Amen. We're going to pause right now for a word from our sponsors, but please stay tuned as we go through some introspective questions and prayer points. Hey there, Purpose Enthusiasts. Are you looking to elevate your visuals to new heights? Well, I've got fantastic news for you. For the month of August, I am honored to partner with A Daily Purpose, the podcast. Hello, I'm Broderick Slaughter, the founder and owner of Aesthetic Flow Media your go-to source for all things aerial and visual. Whether you're in need of stunning aerial footage for commercial or residential real estate, or seeking breathtaking photos and videos for your special events, Aesthetic Flow Media has got you covered. I guarantee Aesthetic Flow Media will wow your clients, give your marketing the special touch, and capture special moments that will last a lifetime. Whether you're hosting an outdoor wedding, reception, family reunion, or any other outdoor event, let Aesthetic Flow Media document the joy and celebration in a way that will leave you breathless. Visit our website linked in the description. As I am reading and studying the book of Nehemiah, I cannot be helped but be moved to see how God is working in my life, what he is building and what he is tearing down, what he is bringing me to and what he is bringing me away from. And in the points that we just went over in the Bible study and devotional section, I thought it a great idea by the Holy Spirit to give some questions and prayer points and some additional scriptures to support this. So with Nehemiah chapter 9 and 10 in mind, we're going to look at comprehensive commitment, separation from the world, and obedience to God's commands. These come directly from the Bible study that we just went through, okay? So comprehensive commitment. Ask yourself, in what areas of my life have I compartmentalized my faith? That means that in this area, I'm going to trust God. Like perhaps it's my comings and goings, but I'm not going to check in with him when it comes to my business or my ministry. So that's what we mean by compartmentalizing. The next question you can ask yourself is, how can I align every aspect of my life with God's lordship to ensure a comprehensive commitment? We are inviting God into the all Heavenly Father, I confess that I sometimes compartmentalize my faith. Help me to surrender every area of my life to your Lordship. Show me how to live with a commitment to your will, aligning my choices, relationships, business, ministry, and action with your purposes. Amen. An additional scripture is found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 38. And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And we know we can find that as well in Deuteronomy. The second set of questions and prayer points is separation from the world. Ask yourself, What worldly influences or habits have I allowed to creep into my life? How can I intentionally distance myself from these influences to maintain an undivided devotion to God? We can pray. Lord, I recognize the worldly influences that have drawn me away from you. Give me the strength and discernment to separate myself from these distractions. Renew my focus on you, Lord Jesus, so I can wholeheartedly devote myself to your ways and avoid the pitfalls of idolatry. Amen. An additional scripture is found in Romans 12 too. Do not conform to the pattern of of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And lastly, obedience to God's commands. 
Ask yourself, where have I fallen short in obeying God's command? How can I better understand his word and actively put it into practice to foster a deeper relationship with him? We can pray. Gracious God, I humbly admit my shortcomings in obeying your commands. Grant me a hunger for your word and a deep understanding of your instructions. Help me apply your teachings in practical ways, transforming my heart and guiding my choices towards a life of obedience and closeness to you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Through these questions, prayer points, and scriptures, you can embark on a journey of self-reflection and sincere conversation with God as you seek his guidance to realign your life with his original design and purpose. Amen. Amen. Day 227, Renewal and Covenant by founding writer Tori Slaughter. A Daily Purpose Bible Study and Devotional offers you the perfect chance to initiate a conversation about God's Word. We are deeply grateful to you for sharing this podcast with your friends and family. We would like to thank our many sponsors and Patreon family whose donations help us to provide this valuable content. If you feel led to contribute financially and become part of the Our Given Purpose ministry, please visit OurGivenPurpose.com. Your contribution will help us spread God's message and connect with people all over the world. Remember, you have seeds to sprinkle and don't lose sight of the ones falling on you. Where will they grow? By the road and shallow soil and the thickets? Or will they find a home in good soil to flourish and produce a good work? What God has begun in you, he will complete. Have faith and be bold. You've just heard a Daily Purpose Bible Study and Devotional, a podcast by Our Given Purpose. Go ahead and share it with a friend right now.